You are planning your trip to Philippines? Guess what? You just spent almost two months there. So we have a lot of information and tips to share with you to make the best of your trip. Let's begin. Number one, obviously it's going to be about visa because you need to get them if you want to go to Philippines. And also it depends how long you want to stay there. You have one option, which is visa on arrival. It's for 30 days for many, many countries in the world. For example, me, Roma, I'm sure it's Canada, USA. I can go on and on and on. But you cannot exceed these 30 days. If you want to stay longer, you have to go find the nearest immigration office and then you will be able to do it for another month for example like we did and that costs 3130 pesos which is almost 60 dollars but you have only 29 days if you already know that you want to stay more than two months you should directly buy your visa for this amount of days because you will pay much less than extension because that's really expensive yeah we kind of lost 100 euros i mean we should have think about it before and directly took two months so think a lot before choosing your visa where you should start traveling in the philippines that's a good question there is two major cities you will probably fly to it's manila or cebu if you fly to manila you will probably have to take a really long flight to your destination like Chicago or exactly what we've done also, if you like big cities, Manila is a good stay. We spent a few days and we really enjoyed it. There is a lot of things to see. But if you arrive in a place like Cebu, which is also a big town, maybe the second biggest town of the Philippines, you will be more in the center of everything. So it means that you will be more able to take a boat, to go somewhere, to go to another island, or to even stay on the island of Cebu because it's pretty nice and there is a lot of things to see, or to take a short of plane to uh, Boracay, to uh, Port Princesia, to go to El Nido. So yeah, I think it's maybe the best thing to do, to arrive in Cebu and maybe at the end of your trip, go to Manila, spend a few days and go back home. Now we're gonna speak about something really, really important, especially in 2019, where everybody want to use his iPhone to share his stories on Instagram and make your friends jealous because you are in the wonderful place which is Philippine. Um, so you have to know that we are traveling since 10 months and Philippines is from so far one of the worst place for the internet. If you are in Manila, you will have a really strong one. If you are in your hotel, if you are lucky, we had a good one. But for your phone, the mobile carrier uh, price are kind of not that interesting. We had to recharge every four or three days, you know, it was like, uh, few giga for three days but it was cheap that was cheap but if you do it like 10 times in the month you know it's not not that interesting also you can buy for one month but also that was quite expensive mm -hmm. for us if i remember well like rama said the, the internet in the major cities is quite good that's what we noticed and the fact is that the wi-fi in some remote areas is like non-existent so sometimes <laughs> you have a sim card uh, the 3G or even the LTE, you know, it's like the 4G of here, uh, it's really bad. So even sometimes you have LTE, it's not working and the Wi-Fi, you're like, oh, it's okay, it's not working, but I guess there is Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi is absolutely not working too. So yeah, we really went to some remote island where it was totally impossible to do anything. You can speak with your family that's working. Mm -hmm. If you want to upload, if you want to watch a TV show at night in your bed, that's not working. Forget, Forget it. it. <laughs> But the good thing about that is that sometimes you can enjoy your days without spending your all day long on the internet That's a positive on your thing. Phone. That's a positive thing. So that was kind of good. How to travel in the Philippines is probably the most important question you get when you're trying to get to the Philippines. So there's a lot of options by flight. It's probably the most expensive, most fastest. But I think if you buy your flights before you can get really nice prices. After you can take a lot of boats, the boats are pretty fast, overly slow. It's cheap, but sometimes it can be really expensive. Mm -hmm. You are in a really expensive place. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, 
always have a sweat with you because they put AC really strong and that's horrible. So be aware of that. And the prices are from 120 pesos, that was the cheapest boat we took, to 750 when we tried to get to Sikiro. It was really, really expensive. But For like two hours of, of ride, so that's really, wow, overpriced. Mm -hmm. Overpriced for nothing. So yeah, it, yeah, it was between two uh, major uh, islands of the Philippines, so that's why. After there's an adoption and it's by bus. There's two different buses, you can take the AC bus and the non-AC bus. And there is not a big difference between mm -hmm. the two of them. And the AC is not that strong in the AC bus, so you can try this one. It's pretty nice, mm -hmm. uh, you are still with a lot of locals, so yeah, that, that's cool. It's, it's nice and sometimes they put a movie, so that's fun. <laughs> And most of the buses are kind of fast, so you don't have to travel for 10 hours or I don't know. For us, we really enjoyed to travel like a local, like the boats, the buses, it was really nice. That's the best, but it takes a long time. Yeah, you can like, travel for one day. <laughs> sometimes you have like, you know, three islands like that, and you want to go to this one. So of course, if you take a plane, you win a lot of time. But if you don't, you have to bus, boat, bus, boat, bus, that's really long. But man, it's nice. If you have a lot of time, it's a good experience and you will save money, so... Yeah, we always save money if we did this traveling day. There's also option to take a van. Sometimes we noticed that the price of the van was cheaper than the bus. That was really surprising mm -hmm. to us because it's like, how is it even possible? You are like maybe 10 or 12 inside of it. But the thing is, sometimes they really overcharge it. So you are supposed to be three, but of course they put another person because they want to make more money. So you are like for two hours like that, four people sitting next to each other and that's really not, you know, we all want sometimes our bit of comfort. And it's more because you pay, I mean, if you were paying two dollars for this ride, you would be like, ah. Oh. It actually happened when we were traveling from Porto Princesa to Port Barton. And I don't know why they think that for people in the city it's possible because this is a destination for tourists, so they know that the tourists are quite big and the workers are quite small, so we were like, for huge people sitting like that, I could not even be like that, I have to be like that for 2-3 hours. Yeah. It was just impossible. <laughs> when you're going to be in a destination, the best way to travel is by tricycle. It's quite cheap. They don't really try to screw you over the prices. No, they are, maybe a few times. They are pretty honest. You know, The best is to ask a local or if you're on the bus or on the boat, the guys are going to jump to you. Sometimes they even go inside of the bus be like, sir, sir, you need to go somewhere? just want some coal, you just want to be like, okay, let me take my bag at least. So ask always the driver of the car, the boat, to be like, okay, I want to go there. Can you just give me an idea of the price that I should pay? That's a good, uh, a good technique. But most of the time they were honest with the price. It's never too, it's never too expensive. Or you can have a grab that's working only for Cebu and Manila. I think so. Right, only for big city. And the last option how you can travel is by motorbike. The renting of motorbike was not really expensive, it depends on the destination. The cheapest we took it was around 300 pesos and the most expensive it was in uh, Panglao in uh, Bohol for 550 pesos. Yeah. But you have to think that you always have to give them your passport or your ID. Please don't forget to take it back Yeah. because I forgot my ID. In a guest house. In Bantayan Island. Yeah, that's If you watch this video, can you send me my ID? There is address on the For sure, I'm, I'm sure they still have it. <laughs> like, we really forget it there stupidly. We're on a rush and we forget it. But, but yeah, that's the best way to travel in your destination. Yeah, yeah. You are free, you can go anywhere. Very simple, very easy. And there is even some big island where you can rent a motorbike for at least four or five days, I think, and really take your time. Like Bobol Island, I think you can really take your time. So now we're gonna speak about something really important, uh, the accommodation. So yeah, I'm going to say again the same thing, but I think it makes sense because we're traveling since a while. But it's true that the Philippines were maybe not the best quality price fare that we found because sometimes you pay, you know, for in Cebu, for example, we were paying minimum uh, $14 and the room was like, student school room but you know it's it's not the best quality thing uh, like in Chiagao for example which is not for the moment not that developed but it's really a, a surfing uh, area and you should go there it's pretty nice it's kind of a party uh, island if I can call it like that 
and it's true that we were close from the new year so I guess it's maybe for that but we were paying something like $13 or $14 and the room was the smallest one we saw in 10 months of travel. <laughs> like, you can see right now in the video uh, that it's really, really, really small. So we are kind of not disappointed by the accommodation, but more like surprised, like, hey, I paid 15, $15 and I get that? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and the girl, she was even like, did you, be, like, we say hello to her and she was like, did you really check the picture on booking? Like I send you more picture because she's used to have this kind of reaction. But actually we had a really an amazing time there because the family was so nice. So it was a bit overpriced. Mm. Uh, and what can I say more? Uh, I think in some, you don't know why, sometimes there is an island where you will find only bad accommodation and overpriced. And a few days after you're gonna arrive in an island, like we're in Bantayan where she forgot her ID. Uh, we were paying 600 pesos, which is 10 euros. 10 euros, and we were like, the sea was there, blue water, really nice. Yeah, that was pretty nice price. It was pretty clean. The family was nice, but don't accept a really luxury room for 10 dollar. No, you cannot. But the tip I want to give you that sometimes you can not book your accommodation through booking because there's a lot of taxes you have to pay extra. Mm. But you just go in the island and you just find it by yourself. Sometimes you can find a nice place with a good price or really budget rooms with a low price. So that was really nice. What we are doing all the time is going out of the bus or the boat and directly speaking with the tricycle guy. And you tell him, do you know a cheap place? And you try to make yourself understand. Like you say, not expensive, I want, do you know a cheap hotel? And most of the time, those places were not on booking. And the tricycle guy is like, okay, no problem, I'll bring you. And you drop you to place, sometimes we pay, I think, 300 pesos for one room. Oh, yes, the room was pretty old and... It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> to spend two nights, it was okay, you know, it's, it's what I mean. If you are in budget and you want to backpack around the Philippines, you can manage it, you can find some cheap place. And you can also uh, sleep on a hostel because there is a lot of hostel uh, in the Philippines. If you want something really cool and nice, you should book the Zen rooms or the Red Doors, you really enjoy them. I think they are more in the major cities like Manila, Cebu. It's like an organism and they know that foreign people have some maybe standards and those guys from Zen room, mm -hmm. they are here to make you sure that you will get those things like hot water, comfortable bed, not noisy area, uh, stuff like that. So that's pretty nice. When you see right on Zen room, you can be pretty sure that you're gonna have a, a good time. You are always uh, happy about these rooms. So now we're gonna speak about something really important: uh, the food, because you know that for us it's seventy percent of our destination. Well, okay. Sometimes we arrive in some country we didn't know exactly what to accept. Uh, what to say about Philippines? Mm, it's pretty good. It's pretty nice. They are really, really into um, pork and chicken. So they have different ways to cook it. Uh, they have actually the best roasted chicken I ever had in my life. I mean, we all have roasted chicken in our country, right? But then they are really cooking it, you know, on the brush, full of herbs, and it's tender and it's cheap. You can buy it in the street everywhere. It's I love to speak about food, you know, and that's really important for us. And uh, that for that we have a really good time and also the lotion, it's like the pork, you know, with the skin and like they have big piece like that, cooking like the chicken, it's all the time nearby the chicken and it's cooking for hours and the chicken is like crusty as hell and the skin is crusty as hell and they just chop it, they give it to you like that and just eat like that with a rice, a plain rice and a bit of soy sauce. Whoa, that, that's really good. So be careful because I swear, if you stay one month in the Philippines and you eat that every day, you're gonna get some fat, like really. And but you don't have to eat only lechon and uh, chicken. You can eat so much more. There's the sizzling, there's dead, there's adobo, there's, there's so much of food. Yeah, there. they even and have their special uh, curry chicken, curry pork. The sizzling, like she said, is like a, a chopped pork with a, serve on a really, really burning plate, so when they bring it to your table, it's like shh, and there is an egg on the top, and you just mix everything, so your egg is cooking with the meat, that's, that's really, yeah, it's nice. 
but we have to do something. Philippines has a lot of fast food absolutely everywhere. It's really love it. And that's pretty fun because you know there they have this brand called Jollibee. It's a Filipino fast food which is working really well, maybe more than McDonald's. But if you go there on the fast food, Jollibee or KFC or Burger King or McDonald's, you will notice that the people there are coming not for the burgers like us we do in our country. They come there to eat some fried chicken or to eat some spaghetti. They love the spaghetti. They have like a recipe of tomato sauce, really sweet. And McDo began to sell it because they know that it's working a lot. Nobody's eating burgers. Like the place is full, but everybody's eating those pasta. But we were always the only one who were eating a burger. It's so weird. So when you see Jollibee, there will be McDonald's just next, Burger King just next, and KFC just the next. I think it's a big fight, you know, like <laughs> all those big major uh, fast food company are like fighting on the territory of uh, Philippines. But yeah, Filipino food is absolutely amazing. You will love it. So a little point uh, about the weather, which is I think pretty important. Uh, so we check online before going there. We didn't really know. We don't want it to do the same mistake that we did before about the monsoon. We don't want it to be blocked with the rain. And we saw online like, oh yeah, you can come from December until June. But the thing is, we came in December and in almost two months there, we really had three, three weeks kind of rainy. And wow, we went in Sikihor. I don't know if you saw the video. It's right there. You can click and, and go watch it. And you will notice that we were under the gray sky, under the rain, and we spent one or two full days inside of the bungalow. And then after we decided to just force ourselves to go visit under the rain. It was, you know, like not tropical rain. Like we were cold. It was not nice. You don't want to see the Philippines under this weather. So, um, we spoke a lot with local people. They were all saying like, yeah, low pressure, low pressure. I said, okay, <laughs> they cannot do anything about it, right? But they all said that the best time, it's really from February. So I think if you come here, yeah, February, March, April, May, you will have like blue sky and absolutely zero clouds. But again, everything can happen. You know, you cannot control the nature. You can have rain or two, but us were pretty not lucky about it. Mm -hmm. But you have to think that when you come to the high season, there will be a lot of tourists. And the price will be higher. So what do you should pack for this Filipino trip? So it depends on the season, obviously. Don't forget your swimsuit because you want to stay on the beach probably. But if you come in December, don't forget your raincoat. Yeah. And maybe some light jacket, light pants. And take also your swimsuit, even if you come in uh, November or October. And I wanted to speak about it because we did a kind of a mistake, I think. When we arrived to Philippines, we were like, okay, oh, we should have our own gear. When I say gear, I'm speaking about mask and fin, you know, to go snorkel. And we spent like $70 in uh, food equipment and we use it two times. So that was really a big mistake. I don't know why we, we thought that we were going to need it that much. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, um, the snorkeling points, uh, they borrow you some. You can hire a boat with a driver and with a big group. So they bring you to a really remote snorkeling place. For the one we're planning on hiking, because there is few trek to do, we didn't do it because we didn't get the occasion. I don't think you should bother yourself by bringing some uh, hiking shoes, because we met some guys and even some family who did some, some volcano, and I think your little sneakers will be totally enough. So no need to bring your big boots. You are probably curious, what is the currency in the Philippines? It's a pesos. To know more about that, when you're going to take money out in the ATM, there will be always fee for 250 pesos for the international cards. In some remote islands, they will not even have an ATM, so bring your cash all the time. I'm thinking about Port Barton, that you have to go visit because that's really nice. And if you go to Malapascua, which is famous for the snorkeling, uh, to see the whale shark. If you don't have cash there, maybe there is sometimes some shop uh, they used to do that, you know, they have like the credit card machine to pay on their business or commerce. You will pay something and they give you like 50 euro, but they take a big charge on that. We saw that in Laos and I'm pretty sure that they are doing that here too. But don't do it because you'll pay a lot. No, bring a lot of cash before. And if you have your cash, 
try to always break the biggest banknotes because when you give somebody 1000 pesos and you pay something like 50 pesos they say no sorry we don't have change and you are just like you cannot i swear like it happened to us so many times they just don't want it so try to break it and most of the time when you take money out of the atm they give you like three bills of 1000 Okay, so one of the last thing we're gonna speak about is the alcohol and the tobacco in the uh, Philippines. So they really have this um, law against uh, cigarettes in public places. Like, um, if you are in Thailand or I don't know where in Southeast Asia, you can smoke kind of free in the streets, your cigarette, drink a beer. But here really they don't like that. You are supposed to go smoke, really ask all the time in front of your guest house if you can smoke in the street in front of your hotel. You cannot uh, go to the 7-Eleven, bring a beer and drink into the street. That's really not working. They don't want to see you um, drink alcohol in the street. But the alcohol is still pretty cheap, so you can find some beers and some uh, homemade rum, which are not that bad actually, uh, for pretty cheap, but just don't drink in the street. And after you can be in Siagao, like I said before, it's a surfing place, you will be able to drink in the street and to smoke a cigarette. Nobody will annoy you, I don't think so. Actually. It really depends on which place you are in the Philippines. Everything is different. Yeah, and there is a lot of town you arrive in, it's Big sign, right turn, coming in, for example, it's an island that we visit, that you should go visit. It's right turn in big, uh, coming in, uh, smoke free island, uh, so really you cannot smoke in the street. And I'm not even speaking about marijuana, uh, that you should totally, totally forget it. it. Like really, nobody will propose you in the street, you will not see anybody smoking. And don't try to play that because you could have serious problem. You are not in Laos, you are not in Thailand where you can, I don't know what, give money to the cops and be free. There you could really go to jail. It's like Indonesia and I'm not kidding with that. So really be careful. And the last, last, last point of this guy is going to be about people. It's pretty important to know which kind of people you're gonna meet there. I mean, how Filipino people are. They're amazing, they're super friendly. They speak really good English, that was really helpful. So you can speak with a child, with a grandmother and share a lot. You really, really have to experience their life, their happiness, their hospitality. They are just amazing people. It's probably one of the most nice yeah. people we saw for on sure. our trip. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They will all the time invite you if they see you on an island. If they are drinking a beer on the beach, they will be like, oh, come, come. And uh, yeah, it's already happened to us so many times in our video. You can even see it uh, that you get invited just to have a shot of rum in the middle of the afternoon or to share a beer with them. So that's nice. So we hope that this ultimate guide how to travel in the Philippines will help you to plan your trip in the Philippines. Go to the Philippines, enjoy the beautiful beaches, speak to the people. Yeah, don't be scared to, to go see the people and speak with them. And we try to fly from a point to another one. We kept a lot of information during our stay there. So we hope we didn't forget anything. But if we did, you can comment down below and tell the other people. Yeah, they sucks. Yeah, they didn't speak about that. Oh, they're really lame about Gid. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, keep watching. We are really soon flying to Vietnam and we're gonna have an amazing time there. We're gonna do more street food video, I think. So uh, click the button, uh, subscribe and uh, hit the bell and see you on another one.